Inflation, right? The drawn out battle between American consumers and higher prices saw another setback last month. A key government index said uh, price increases picked up again in March, and this is driven up by two essential areas. Here's the details. U.S. consumers continue to feel the squeeze of higher prices for essentials like gas and shelter. The Bureau of Labor Statistics said Wednesday that the consumer price index increased at a year-over-year -year rate of 3.5 percent in March, the reading the highest annual gain in the last six months. This has definitely been a setback. This is not good news. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the Fed or anyone else should give up the fight against inflation. Overall, grocery prices stayed flat month to month, but they're up 1.2 percent from a year ago. I think uh, consumers continue to feel the pinch. I think consumers continue to compare prices to sort of pre-COVID or two or three years ago. Purdue University professor of agricultural economics Joe Balagta says that comparison, in addition to increased costs in other areas, could shade how consumers feel about their grocery tabs. The things that we pay for outside of the grocery store also affect the money we have left to spend on groceries, right? So if we have to spend more on gasoline, um, uh, if our auto insurance uh, becomes more expensive if our housing becomes more expensive. Gas prices ticked up 1.7% from February to March, and the cost of auto insurance was up 2.6% last month, up a whopping 22% from one year ago. And now joining us for more insight on this uh, inflation print is Trivasani. Joseph Trevisani, a senior analyst at FX Street. Now, Joseph, so this, uh, this new report uh, seems like to show that this is the third straight month of strong consumer prices. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel? Well, the Fed's biggest problem is that if you look at the annualized rate for the past three months, including uh, the March number, it's at 4.4%. The prior three months was at 3.4%. That's a pretty big increase, and it's one that's going entirely in the wrong direction. The Fed's entire policy, this whole scenario that they're bet betting on or that they're figuring on is inflation is going to come off and the economy is going to slow. And that justifies, that's the rationale for having rate cuts this year. So far, neither side is coming true. Do you think uh, this uh, disinflationary trend, has it stalled? I think it probably has. What's going on, there's many other factors involved. If you look at some of the background factors, certainly the Federal Reserve's um, ability to control the economy through interest rates is always at a lag and always a bit of a problem. The deficits of the federal government are still running 1.2, 1.4, 1.6 trillion, 1 1.8 next year. There are increasing problems that are forcing energy prices higher. And energy is, of course, the basic commodity for the world industrial economy. So there are real reasons for the increase in inflation that the Fed is seeing, and they know that. So you're saying there is, in fact, risk of it actually increasing and not just stalling. Inflation. I think there is. I mean, take, a, take an example of the Middle East, which is not necessarily an economic factor, but it could very well become one. If something happens or something escalates in the Middle East, oil prices will most certainly shoot higher. If they do, that ramifies throughout the entire economy. That is something the Fed cannot control. What do you think about the market's reaction to this print? Well, the market's enjoyment, if you will, of interest rates, of, of the prospect of lower interest rates is diminishing because the prospect of low interest rates is diminishing. And if you just look at the Fed futures, they had three rates, three cuts were the end of the year. Now they're betting in two. I think that may actually continue. The first rate cut had been considered to be last month before this number in June. Now it's moved out to September. So you're having a real change. So Barclays sees uh, about a one rate cut this year. Uh, right. Is that about right, uh, based on your estimates? Well, the Fed funds at the end of today would be pretty much basing in, putting in two rate cuts by the end of the year, by where the, the end of the year rate would be. I would not be surprised at all if the Fed dropped to one or no rate cuts this year. What logic, what rationale, in the Fed's own words, do they have for cutting rates right now at the moment? They don't have any.
Um, well, we also had the Fed minutes uh, come out today, so I, I want your thoughts on that. Uh, seems like officials are worried that uh, progress on inflation uh, may have stalled, as you mentioned right. uh, just now, uh, and that the, today's higher reading certainly doesn't help the case. Uh, so, I mean, what do you think stood out? In the you know, the Fed has a very recent history, of course. We remember when, Fed, when inflation was going to be transitory. They have a very recent history of being wrong about that. I could say that they've got a very long history of being long about, long, wrong about inflation. So they are very wary, and that seems to be what the, what the minutes are telling us. They're very wary of cutting rates if they don't have a very obvious rationale for it, if they don't have rates in their favorite term, progressing towards 2%. I don't see any evidence that rates are moving towards 2%. Neither does the Fed. So we just have about a minute left. Let me ask you this. So higher prices, uh, inflation looms large over the U.S. presidential election. Yes. Um, what do you think is the dy dynamic between the Fed, the election, and inflation? That's a tricky one because the Fed certainly does not want to be seen to be playing any type of political influence or political game with it. And so I think they're going to stick very, very strictly both to the rhetoric and the logic of their rationale as stewards of the economy and stewards of inflation. They do not have a good rationale right now for cutting rates. So I don't think they will until they do. It is also true that among the, all of the, in, the in economic factors that go into uh, a person's consideration about who they might vote for, inflation plays a very large role. Consumers dislike inflation intensely. So all of these re these, this logic and these reasons, I think, will keep the Fed on hold. I see. Well, thank you very much today for your insight, Joseph. Thank you for having me.